Hi everyone, today I am talking about sunscreen and if you are interested in knowing what really works for looking after your skin then you will surely by now have got the message that you need to wear sunscreen every day. It doesn't matter what kind, uh, it could be a moisturiser with sunscreen, a hydrating primer with sunscreen, maybe a mineral powder foundation that's got SPF in it. I really don't mind as long as it is going to shield your skin. And that's because any dermatologist will tell you that 90% of what we think of as the signs of aging, the wrinkles, the rough texture, the age spots that build up on the skin, those are the direct result of years of exposure to ultraviolet light. Not just to the burning UVB rays that we get on a holiday or in hot sun, though that doesn't help, but the everyday exposure to grey old UK daylight, it's all the UVA rays, the ageing rays, that come through day after day, all year round, and that's what results in wrinkles. That's also what steadily damages the DNA of your skin cells. And so the question is, how far can you go on damaging that DNA before the damage tips over into the kind of mutations that lead to skin cancer? Uh, it's really hard to say because that varies from person to person. It depends on your genes and um, it's just better to wear the sunscreen in the first place. And I know lots of people will say, what about vitamin D? We need vitamin D. And that is very true. And we mostly make vitamin D in our skin, in our bodies, by the action of the sun on our skin. But the, um, the sun in the UK is only strong enough to do that between April and September. And during those times, <laughs> I find if I want to get a, a vitamin D boost, uh, it's easy to do that by um, exposing my arms or my legs and I would rather um, protect my face and get my vitamin D in other ways or also in supplements. Whether you should be wearing mineral sunscreens or the chemical sunscreens, the chemical um, sun protection factors, they absorb the UV rays, the mineral sunscreens, they bounce it back. Mineral ones are thought to be slightly healthier for the skin but frankly I think you should just be wearing sunscreen of some sort in the first place and it's finding one that suits you and that you like and that suits your budget um, is the thing that is going to make you prepared to wear it every day whether you're on holiday or not. So I have gone and put together a whole heap of sunscreens here which are the ones I like most at the moment or they are new interesting technologies or they've all got things about them. I've put them in different categories and I'm going to give you a quick whiz through all of those starting with um, everyday sunscreens so these ones are the kind of thing you can just uh, slap on every day they're like moisturizer with SPF in it so these these are the ones I've got here there's a Olay Regenerous Luminous um, SPF 20 protecting and brightening cream very easy to use um, makes you slightly white but if you rub it in that soon goes away um, Vichy Ideal Soleil SPF 50 more of a sunscreen but um, this one is a mattifying one it's a dry touch one so if you are somebody who hates your face going at all shiny which sunscreens can do that's good um, Palmer's now Palmer's has done a range of um, skincare and this is just a moisturizing day cream with SPF in it great bargain nice stuff it does have that Palmer's chocolatey uh, chocolate orange kind of smell so if you don't like that watch out but otherwise that is really nice um, and this Boots Botanics um, it's SPF 15 day cream it's like 2 dollars so absolute bargain I'll put all the prices for these down below so you can see how they compare I mean if I was completely broke the one I would probably go for is Superdrug's vitamin E cream with SPF 15 I haven't got that here but it's a lovely cream, nice texture, SPF, job done. Um, and should you wear more SPF? Well, SPF 15 is enough to block most of the rays that you'll be encountering. And the thing is that you need to put sunscreen on more often than you think. If you put it on in the morning, you will need to reapply it at lunchtime because um, it doesn't last all day. Um, even the ones that say they last all day, I would feel safer if you were reapplying um, them to get the actual benefits um, that are advertised on the can. I, when, um, when they are testing sunscreens in the lab, uh, they're used at um, 
two milligrams per centimeter squared of skin, which is quite a thick layer. And none of us actually applies that in real life. And then we sweat or rub our faces or towel it off or whatever. Anyway, on with the sunscreens. Um, primers that you would use before makeup. There are some great ones now which have um, sun protection in them. Here is a Paula's Choice one. That's lovely, very easy to put on, smooths away your wrinkles, also protects your skin. Um, Urban Decay has just done a, a new range, a whole range of primers. This one's got an SPF 30 in it, Urban Defense Complexion Primer. Um, this is Laura Mercier. This is actually the tinted foundation, but there is a primer that looks just like this. I couldn't actually find that one, SPF 30. Lovely finish to it. So those are more makeup-y, if you like. Um, should you wear, just if you just wear makeup foundation that's got SPF in it, um, I tend to think you don't put on enough foundation to give you the proper sunscreening result. And if it's only got SPF in it, um, that is protecting against UVB. It may not have um, the protection factors against UVA, which, as I was saying earlier, is the one that really does the damage. Um, so here are some kind of high-tech, almost makeup, um, thick protection, really nice products which you may not have heard of from brands like Epience. Um, this one, it, it really stays on with one. I find there is so much to clean off at the end of the day, but I find that quite reassuring. It's a, it's a tinted, tinted cream like that. So I find that really as good as a light makeup um, for days when I'm not really wanting foundation. It's quite a hot day today, I'm sorry. I'm sweating on screen. Um, Exuviance um, Sheer Daily Protector. This is a lovely one. You have to shake it up um, to blend it. Here's a new Allumier, um, Allumier MD. This is a new brand. You can only find this in specialist skin clinics, but if it's one you want to hunt down, um, it comes in various colours. And again, it's a sort of, oh, it's, it's clear. I mean, it's white, but it's got bursting beads of uh, colour in it. So yeah, you can see that's not gone white on there. Oh, now sprays. These are a new thing. Um, there have been SPF sprays, but these have been coming through in a big way this year. So. Here we have, there's a couple from Garnier, uh, one for the Ombre Solaire, one for Moisture Bomb, Philorga, lovely, lovely one there, very sophisticated version, and La Roche-Posay, um, a spray version of one of my favourite sunscreen. Now why these sprays are great is because it, you can apply them over the top of your makeup, so if you are popping them on in the middle of the day, uh, this is a really easy way to do it, you know, kind of no excuses, keep one of these in your bag. Um, and these are widely available and they're all kind of, are they under, yeah, they're 75 mils, so they can travel. Um, now, super sophisticated high-tech skincare creams, this little bunch here. Dr. Seabag Sun Protection in the City. This is the kind of thing that will give you total protection for your face and a very nice feeling formula as is the Chanel UV Essentials, small, perfect, gorgeous. These are all about 40 to 60 pounds, depending, I think this one, QMS um, Medicosmetics, which is that's another SPF 50, yep, just um, over 60 quid, but um, these are for, well, they're, they're great protection, but they're all um, really well-worked formulas that will feel very nice on the skin. I mean. This is a, a new one, um, Murad's uh, lovely ultra protection. It's got SPF 50, broad spectrum protection, age defense it calls itself because it also protects against high energy visible light. Um, that's kind of icing on the cake, I think. You need, as long as you're protecting from UVA and UVB, that's a start. If you're gonna go further, this is a good one to go with. Um, and SkinCeuticals, love this, um, which is called the ultra facial defense and again that's an SPF 50 a very sophisticated formula easy to wear isn't going to give you breakouts or anything else and talking about breakouts um, I know if you have oily skin it is often really hard to find a sunscreen that doesn't aggravate things um, but here are three which I find are good I've got an oilier skin um, I still do get the odd spot and uh, these ones all seem to work for me this is Avene's Clean Ants range, SPF 50. 
um, this is Paula's choice resist um, resist youth extending hydrating daily fluid SPF 50 lovely it is moisturizing but it's really light but it's a very hard-working formula so I love that and this um, Helia care this is the kind of thing you only find in skin clinics as well but well worth tracking down and this is a dry touch gel um, dry, dry touch oil free gel um, which I like much more than the Helia Care one with the orange bands on that, if you've seen that one. And this is really dry touch, there's no moisturising in it. So if you're the sort of person who simply wants a layer of sunscreen, that's nice there. Um, I've got a, a category for, for the Glam sunscreens. This is Institute Estiderm, which doesn't count itself in SPFs or anything like that. It has star ratings, so it's a, a harder technology to explain but it's a very luxurious formulation so a bit of indulgence because this is like 55 quid or something but it smells amazing feels amazing works really well to protect your skin but it does allow you a bit of a tan at the same time um clinique's new virtue oil body mist this is lovely it's an oil mist so it's kind of a glamorous poolside sort of thing that um i'm going to take it on holiday with me next week and looking forward to using that one. I haven't got here the Pitts Green one because my daughter's run off with it on holiday, but that is called something like Instant Glow. Again, I'll put the details down below. And that has sparkly pearlescent particles in it. So um, if you're needing a bit of poolside glamour, um, that Pitts Green one is great for that. Um, I find it a bit too much for sort of being around in the city, being a bit older, but um, for her being in her 20s, it's ideal. Then we got some new technology ones. Um, this is Shiseido's Wet Force technology, which they launched last year. And you know how when you're in the pool, um, you come out and um, as soon as you use a towel, you're rubbing off half your sunscreen, or as soon as you start sweating, the sunscreen starts to shift. I and mean, this has got an in a technology in it that makes the sunscreen stick more firmly to your skin uh, when your skin is wet so that's very clever this is the sensitive skin version of it and this is a new brand from New Zealand called Skinnies which um, its USP its thing is that it doesn't have any water in the formulation so it's a concentrated sunscreen if you like which I haven't tried this out yet in a sunny situation um, I tend to think that it's more is more when it comes to sunscreen rather than less is more but this is working on a less is more it says you only need a pea-sized bit for your face and neck um, and that it protects anyway worth looking at if you fancy something new and then I think I've got a category of just which are my favorites now I've been going on about this for I don't know how long so there's um, ultra sun face I love the whole ultra sun range and this is just a really reliable, really easy to use, uh, long lasting. They don't push it with sunscreen, don't just because it's got a bigger SPF factor on it, stay out longer in the sun, just use your head and um, seek shade when you need it. Uh, La Roche-Posay, I've talked about this one before, um, one of my absolute favorites, very good, very easy to use. Oh, and this Paula's Choice, I love, um, just because it's a, uh, a lightweight one so it doesn't make my skin look extra oily and for whatever reasons I said before I love this one and um, hmm which other ones come into the everyday category that Murad's pretty good the ones I love but oh and here's here's one I wanted to mention I've only got a sachet here this is a Kickstarter project by a guy called Tom who's got ride skincare and uh, this is for cyclists and it's quite an adhesive formula not like leaves you sticky but it sticks really well onto the skin so um, and it, it's got lots of organic ingredients so I think good luck to him with that and um, a shout out for Riemann's P20 because this is about the only one I can get my son to use and it is uh, once a day I think I said as I said before I would much prefer that this got reapplied halfway through the day but if you're only going to use something once um, this is pretty good and this is in supermarkets everywhere and then the one we're all waiting for which is about to launch is from Neod now if you know the beauty business you might have heard 
of Niod, and it's very superior formulations. Um, it's one of the Decium stable of brands, and they are about to launch a sunscreen called Survival, um, which uh, ticks all the right boxes for being mineral skins, minerals sunscreen. Sorry, getting my tongue in a tangle there. So it's mineral sunscreen with protection factors going from, um, I think it starts at sort of nothing for a, the one that isn't sunscreen, but going up to 30 and it's a lightweight formula and it's going to be not too expensively priced and Decium being the abnormal beauty company, um, I feel this is going to be breaking a few of the old rules. But anyway, so that's going to be very exciting when it arrives. But for now, this is my, my roundup of all of that and uh, thank you for listening through all of it. I hope it has been helpful rather than more confusing. I've put all the details down below and the main message is just wear sunscreen because your skin will thank you for it in the future.